Okay, um, I'm going to do a quick video on how to change backgrounds. So I went ahead and pulled up the picture that I've colored. So you're going to color your picture first. And this is the picture that I did on the video the other day. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to change this background right here. So you're going to go ahead and color your picture. And the next step we're going to do, once your picture is finished coloring, and you really don't have to color this background if you're going to change it. Um, there's really no need. It was just something I did because I wasn't going to change the background this one. But we're going to go over here to what looks like kind of like a waffle tool. It's called Textures. We're going to click on it. And you're going to go to where it says your own. And we're going to go to open my texture. And like I said, I had put some backgrounds in with my swatches. Just to show, um, you can really choose any any type of background. Um, you can even change them out. Um, I'm actually going to use, let's go ahead and look at this one. Well, I don't really like that one. Let's use one like this. Okay, and what we're going to do is it actually overlays this. You can't really tell it on this one. But actually, it overlays it. We're going to go to normal there there you can see it okay and then we're going to push reverse effect and what this is going to do is it actually pushes it to the very background and if you run your brush over it now it's going to remove the background here and on the outsides i like to turn the hardness up so that you don't have to go over it several times you can just kind of go over it once now, as you get closer to her, you're going to want to turn the hardness back back down. You're going to want to put it, you know, back down here. Because you're going to want it to kind of give her glow, and you don't want it real sharp around her. I'll turn this up a little bit. That's not what I want to do. Turn my brush up a little bit. And I'm just going to go ahead and get these outside edges. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and turn the hardness back down so that it kind of blends a little better. Let's see how it's more of a, a glow, more feathered. It's going to help her to blend. And you actually need to turn your brush size down some. And what I do is I kind of turn it down a little bit bigger than that. Turn it down, and then you're going to zoom in. Just smooth it out. Like this. Because our brush hardness is not as high, we're going to have to go over some of these areas a few few times we could actually turn the hardness back up a little bit but for mistakes and things like that it's just but I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in some so I can see this a little better we're gonna go ahead and do these edges around her face In those hard reach areas you just really want to click once you don't end up taking off a lot which if you do it's not a big deal you can go up and push remove and it'll remove that you can start over not necessarily start over but where you got close like let me show you like if I did this I could just push remove or undo and kind of go back in there So we're just going to get as close as we want to get. So we can get here. Closer is better. Remove this. And some backgrounds are a little more forgiving. 
than others. And you can kind of figure out what they are. And you can use the background that you've colored. You can use um, one that you find pre-colored. I like the studio backgrounds myself, some of the ones that are pre-colored. Um, they just got some really neat ones out there. It's your photography backdrop. Because sometimes the hair is a little more difficult to get because you've got some of these gaps. And you don't want a real straight edge around the hair because when you, you get that straight edge around the hair, that tends to look very sharp in the background. You just kind of want it to blend. Just kind of, oops, like I said, it happens. <laughs> you kind of want, want to make this blend. And it's kind of time consuming, but it does allow for some beautiful effects when you change these backgrounds. And you don't really have to even be sure which background you want when you start. You can always change them after you get it after you get it faded in around her. And that's generally what I do. I just pick one to kind of start out that I can see really well. Okay, and that's actually pretty good. We don't want really any rough edges, so I'm gonna go ahead and smear this one out a little bit more. And we're gonna go zoom out and look. Oh, I missed one right here in the corner. So now that that's done, we can actually change the fade, get a little darker texture and saturation, or you can go in and you can actually open a different background. So let's open this one. I don't know how this is going to look. And a lot of times this is what I do to, to kind of look at it. Like we did this one. And like you can see right here where we didn't get as close as we should. So we can go ahead and fix that now. And when you find a background you like, like I said, you can open several and look just to kind of see how, how they look. And once you find one you like, Go ahead and push apply and change the fade. I like to kind of keep the fade up a little bit. You can change the saturation, make it a little more bright. Something like this. Get a little closer in here on her hair. Like I said, some of them are a little more forgiving than others. You'll find which ones work for you. And you just kind of want to help them blend. See, that's a little better. And when you get done, all you do is push apply, and then you'll go up and save it. And that's a lot of times why I save my images separate. Um, after that, I get them colored so that if I want to go back and change backgrounds or if I want to give them multiple backgrounds, I can. Um, the next thing I want to show you is I'm going to show you how to do some clouds. Say if you've got, let me open a picture that I did some clouds on, or that I didn't and I could have. I'm going to not save this one, but let me go to a different image. I'll look at my images here. And what I'm actually looking for is one with a little bit of sky.
And this is this is a pretty good one. Okay, if I wanted to add some clouds back here, what I would do is I'm going to go to the clouds. And we're going to do the same thing. Um, you can choose different clouds here. Like that one looks pretty good. So, um, let me look at the normal. Sometimes I leave it on multiply. It just depends on how it looks. I'm going to reverse the effect. And I'm going to go in and just start painting. And I think multiply would actually look better on this one because there's actually a tree here. And we don't, it's going to be hard to get that without hitting the tree. And multiply allows you to do that. So, see how it's not covering the tree? And actually use a bigger brush because of that. And that's going to give us a little cloud. Use the same technique to do water. It's got a water tab here. You can do the same technique to do water. We're going to take the brush size down. Go around him, a little closer, and voila. Now you have clouds, and you can actually change them after you, you can't see it, but once you changed it, you can see there's a halo around him. And I'm going to kind of remove that. So you can change it to see which clouds you like best. I kind of like those. But you can change it when you get done. Like I said, leave it on multiply. You can change the saturation to make it blend a little better in your picture. Change the fade. Make it blend. Like I said, it's all about blending. Multiply. Save it. And let me see if I've got one with water. I think I do. Or one that I did with water. I haven't done a whole lot of those. Maybe save somewhere else. Okay. I think it's all the way at the bottom. So let me go here. This is one I did doing water. Like I said, I just clicked here. And I did the reverse effect. Pick the water I like. I think this is the one that I use. I just went and pitch normal. Just get a little bigger brush because it is a bigger area here. And what I did is I just painted this in. I'm just going to do a very rough view here so you can kind of see. Let's just paint this in. very rough here because I'm just trying to show you how this works. You wouldn't normally paint over that, but just give you a little overview of how your water works. Alright, and we've got the water. A little rough, but it's water. So what we'll actually do now is you can turn the fade down, turn, change your saturation to give it, because water's not blue. You can turn your saturation down to kind of give it a better color. And you can see you can actually see through a lot of this where I went over, which makes it look a lot more, you know, naturally like water. Um, you can paint it does what raindrops. You know, just a few a few things. Like that one looks a little calm. There's not ripples in that one. You know, so it's all about, about the look you're wanting. And then when you when you find one you like, I kind of like that one, a little serene. Um, you just and again push plus. And if you decide you don't like it, like we missed spot there, and you don't like it, you always know, just push undo. 
and you do this with all the effects or you can add your own like we like I showed you up here we can add your own effects so just play with it and see how you like it if you have any questions on changing out your background just um, ask and I'll address them thank you